Hey, 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 it's TDA and welcome back to the step-by-step -step guide to Dyson Sphere program. Today we will be building the ultimate version of our planetary mall. Last time around we completed all five different colors of science, which means we now have access to the entire technology tree. That means a lot of new buildings to integrate into our mall. However, building a new mall is not going to be very useful if we don't have the materials to supply it. And if you look at our science build, you will see that every now and then these buildings actually only are partially on or even though they should be completely optimized. And the main reason for that is that we don't have enough resources coming in. The main issue being hydrogen, because even though, as, as you can see, we're not completely running dry on that, we are actually only producing hydrogen in this build over here, which is producing our oil. And even though we're producing it at a pretty decent rate, it's not actually enough to supply all the hydrogen we need everywhere in our system. Speaking of malls, the time has come where you can probably safely remove your starting mall and every building related to it because this is all functioning at Mark 1 belts at low speeds and likely the, most of the resources have already ran out. So it's completely up to you. You can leave it as a museum, but this is the time where you can safely remove it if you want. Now, when you're removing all of those buildings, things tend to get a little messy and by high request, I've made a solution for you for exactly this problem. And I present to you the vacuum, at least that's what I'm calling it. All of this is a collection of storage boxes, each assigned with a specific item to it so it can pick it up from your inventory. And as you're vacuuming everything across the planet, you can just set this to collect all. And you should find some robots instantly coming to pick it up from your inventory. Now, of course, you do need to set this manually one by one. Uh, it's a little annoying, I won't lie, and if you don't care too much about all these uh, resources getting lost, then it's completely up to you. You just uh, press the erase all litter button. It's definitely the faster way, but again, if you're playing on low resources, you might want to conserve everything. Now, the nice thing about this is this will actually save it up in the inventory and distribute it across the planet. Now, as you can see, currently it's out of range. Luckily, we are now upgrading everything to the max. So the distribution range is already in my queue, as you can see. And that should make sure that this can actually reach, for example, the hubs that we uh, made for the science production. Also keep in mind that if you're vacuuming, it's a lot more efficient to do so from outer space because you have a lot longer range and it's a lot easier to actually find everything without having to like manually pick it up from the floor. Now you can be like me and start obsessing about draining every little patch on the planet and uh, I don't know. You could also just spend your time useful and go back to your mall planet. So depending a little bit on how long you've been playing so far, if you come back to your mall planet, you should still find the, um, the proliferators probably in production because they are actually being used on our main planet with the uh, science as well. But a lot of the other items are probably going to be completely stuck up, un up to this point. Now, that depends a little bit on how long you've been playing. If you've been playing really fast, just stamping my blueprints all over the place, it doesn't likely look like this for you. But this is the general idea that if you've been playing for a while, that everything just backs up and it's ready to be used elsewhere. Elsewhere being this main hub where we're producing all those buildings that we want everywhere in our entire universe. Now you can actually see I'm still producing quite a few of these buildings and the only reason that's actually not backed up just yet is that I somehow managed to turn off my titanium alloy production. It was still being produced so you could see the stockpile just a moment ago uh, but it wasn't actually being distributed so these buildings were actually not being produced. Uh, that said I have plenty of them waiting for me so they were close to backing up when I turn it off. It's just a little silly mistake I made. However, um, first things first, let's expand this with every other single building that we have not yet put into production. Now, this includes awesome buildings like the Mark III Assembler, the Planar Smelter, the Mark II Chemical Plant, things like the Mining Machine, the Artificial Star, the uh, Rocket Launching Items, as well as the um, Particle Colliders. So, all of these will probably not be producing anything yet because we haven't actually built a lot of the required materials in order to get there but the important thing is that you build these first just to make sure that as soon as you do have the items they start producing a special mention goes out to the orbital collectors because not only do these require quite annoying mats to make including ILSs and uh, rockets as well as accumulators that are filled up 
they are also extremely slow to make. So this is why we have a double setup, not because you need a huge amount of those, but just to create the first 40 that you will need, because that's the exact amount that fits around a gas giant, uh, that's going to take a while. So we want to make sure we prioritize those first. Okay, so in order to make these orbital collectors, we are going to need some charged accumulators. And in order to charge accumulators, you need these energy exchangers. And specifically, you need to set them to charge. If you set them to discharge, that will drain them. But you want to charge up these things. Now, this layout is very simple. It's also very small because we are not necessarily trying to make a lot of these right here. We just uh, are trying to make some for the orbital collectors. And the basic idea is just to get some uncharged ones getting in. They will automatically get in here as uh, with any processing unit. And then we spit out the charged ones. Now, the way this works is you put them on in uh, at one side and assuming you have them set to charged, and they will be stuck in here until they actually get charged. And then the outgoing belts will actually go right through and into the uh, collecting unit and in that way you can set this up very nice and tight now the only problem is as you can see these things are actually not charging because they will only charge if you have surplus energy that is to avoid these things draining your system so this is actually really smart um, but it also means i'm going to have to put down some more solar panels and actually um, make these things come into action now, as a side note, let's say you're trying to paste down a couple of these uh, solar panels, but there's stuff getting into the way like this. If you press shift enter, you can actually force down the blueprint and actually there's places wherever it does fit. So that's a really easy way to build around veins like this if you don't want to go through the trouble of actually flattening them. Uh, it's also a very nice way to put down larger blueprints in case you... Um, have some foundations getting in the way or something like that but you want to put it down anyway in general it's a very nice thing to know there we go that's a lot of solar panels added to the bottom um, ring over there and as you can see now we have one of the most awesome looking buildings in the game active producing some of those charge accumulators and soon we'll have our first orbitals in production as well one of the first things we're going to need for most Pretty much every single one of the buildings that we've now unlocked is these frame materials. So that's why I actually recommend making two rows of these because it's a fairly slow recipe and we're going to need a lot of that. The next thing we're going to need is a single line of Casimir crystal assemblers. And this is one of the few places where because of the hydrogen amounts that you need in order to make these machines work, a single um, distributor or even a couple of distributors are simply not going to cut it so this is why we have an ils over here requesting these um, from wherever we can get it and honestly it's not going to be anywhere near enough but we'll have to remedy that in a moment but since you can't make casimir crystals without titanium crystals this is where this production line comes in and we can't make those without organic crystals and we can't make organic crystals without plastic so that is one production line done but as you can see scaling things up and making sure you have everything available everywhere takes a bit of effort now the reason we went through all that trouble is so we can make planar filters out of those casimir crystals and we can turn the planar filters into quantum chips and this is again one of those items that you're going to need a lot of um, but the nice thing is that this recipe is actually fairly quick so this won't take that long to fire up and actually the main bottleneck is going to be the steps before this. Now there's again just one problem, we don't actually have titanium glass yet on this planet so let's go fix that. So we'll add a little production line for titanium glass as well and remember that needs water, it won't actually draw water if you build the blueprint initially but we'll get to that in a moment. And just to make sure we keep up the speed, I guess you get the gist by now. We also need particle broadband, we need constraint spheres, we need graviton lenses. And we also need deuterium as well as strange matter. And of course all of those new items are going to need to be added to our mall. Which of course I did in the updated blueprint. So you can just download the same blueprint as you did before. And it should now have the updated buildings in there. And assuming you have the resource, it should automatically unlock for you as well. And... Um, there's one trick in here where I have a single ILS requesting the warpers and actually we're going to make warpers on this planet as well and then there's simply a belt going from one ILS to the other and the warpers actually get their own slot so let me show you that 
Um, as you can see, if I have an outgoing belt, I can select a sixth slot, which is the warper slot, and then just connect that to the next ILS and we'll have the warpers automatically going all around with just a single ILS requesting them. That actually has a double function because we're going to make the warpers on this planet. Uh, first of all, all of these ILSs are actually going to have warper capabilities, so we can actually request these buildings anywhere in the galaxy. But the second is that these warpers are actually also going to be exported to wherever we need that, them to go. So we'll actually get those resources flowing back in uh, the other way. Now, even though a couple of the buildings will start producing already, it's going to be at a trickle speed and that's not going to cut it for what we want it to do, of course. And there's a couple of reasons for that. It's actually a couple of very different reasons. So first of all, we haven't actually upgraded the base production facilities for just the base materials like for example graphite over here and steel over there. We've scaled up so much of our production and we're producing so many different high tier items that we simply need to upgrade our base production as well. Luckily of course at this point that is a very straightforward process to do. Because all you need to do is copy a couple of the layouts we have already over there in the top part of the layout and just copy them down below. Connect the proliferators to it and you're pretty much good to go. Which brings us to a second problem because as you can see this silicon layout over here is not actually doing anything. And that is because I have pretty much ran out of silicon in my starting system. So we'll need to deal with that. However, just to um, finish this up. I recommend making another call layout because that's definitely one of the more high requirement items. Uh, copying the entire steel layout or iron layout I should say as well including the steel and of course like I just said the silicon because silicon is actually used in a lot of the higher tier items. You don't really need the titanium, you don't really need the glass or the, the concrete or anything like that so uh, don't worry about that too much. Same goes for the, um, the copper, it's actually not used in that many items so you should be fine with just a single layout of that at least in this this layer but you definitely need the increase in the graphite as well as in this steel. So we're going to have to bring in a lot more resources from other systems and the way to do that is of course by the means of warpers. However we are not producing warpers over here just yet because we're only producing those on our science planet. It's an easy way to fix that however. We'll just make some and actually this is just a tiny little science build but this is actually not intended to be science it's just the most efficient recipe to make warpers and that's literally the only thing this science build is doing so we're bringing in the items that we need for that of course proliferating them we're exporting this from this box to this box so you could actually just connect the belt but I, uh, I like my bots and then we're spraying that and we're making warpers out of that going into this ILS. Now this ILS is actually requesting a lot of different items that have nothing to do with warpers. Or at least not that much to do with warpers. The simple reason for that is that I want to expand this build just a little tiny bit. Which looks something like this. This is just a simple distribution station for these three resources which have in common that you can actually mine them in their raw shape. So you can pump of course water from any lake. There's actually acid lakes as well in some of the um, galaxies or uh, star systems. So you can actually mine that straight up and you can get deuterium straight up from some g gas giants. So uh, you don't necessarily need to craft that from hydrogen. You can actually get it directly as well. And this is just an easy way to kind of supplement the production that we already have going on this planet and an easy way to use some of the rare resources. And speaking of raw resources, there's three more that we can use in the same manner. So we have organic crystals, which you can mine on some planets straight up. We have these, what are these called again? The opting grading crystals, which are being used for the mining machines. And we have the unipolar magnets, which are being used for the planar smelters, the, basically the Mark II smelters. So all of these we need in raw shape and they're going to go straight into some of these buildings over here. So um, it's worth setting this up just so we to have it ready as soon as we unlock some of these raw resources. With all of that out of the way, the main thing that remains to actually get our mall completely up and running is to make sure it has enough materials and for that reason we need to go off planet once again. Now before you do so, make sure you have enough power, make sure you bring yourself some warpers. You don't need too many of those but you do need more than one or two because you're going to have to use one 
to go somewhere and actually use one to get back. You do not want to get stuck. Uh, make sure you bring plenty of power. So whatever you use for fuel at this point, if it's uh, hydrogen and fuel rods like me, make sure you bring enough of them, at least enough to get somewhere, get settled there and then put down a mall in order to request more, which also means you're going to want to bring plenty of interstellar logistics stations and probably things like miners and stuff like that as well, because we were mostly going there to get some raw resources. So miner, ILS, some belts, sorters, etc. You get the gist. Now, we also are going to need some orbital collectors. And the thing about these is that you want to bring, ideally, a multiple of 40. So four zero, because that's the exact number. So 10 times four that fits on a single gas giant if you place them correctly. So that's just to make sure you go there once, set these up and never have to visit that gas giant ever again. And when you're on a gas giant, you should automatically find that you can only build these orbital collectors at the equator. So that game is kind of protecting you against yourself in case you don't know how this works. So just place them on one of the cross sections of the planet and then you should find that it's exactly two cross sections later where you can build the next one and then two sections later the next one and so on. Just make sure you keep that minimal distance uh, in check so you can actually place all 40 of your collectors on a single gas giant. Now the one in our starting system produces deuterium and hydrogen. This might look like pitiful amounts but keep in mind this is per orbital collector and this actually scales with the veins utilization technology that you can research. So this actually speeds up more and more and more. And this is completely free resources. So this actually scales up really, really fast once you get it going. Oh, and by the way, before you ask, no, you cannot make a blueprint out of this. And yes, this is the most annoying thing to do ever because your drones are extremely slow and you're basically flying around the planet placing these things. So it takes a while. I would recommend only doing it on about two gas giants, one with deuterium and one with fire ice, which is the uh, the rare resource that gas giants can have because fire ice is very, very useful to have. When expanding beyond your initial system, I recommend staying somewhat close to where you initially start out because travel time is still a thing and you probably haven't researched the top speed of all your vessels just yet. So uh, you're basically looking for a system that has most of the things that you're going to want. In my case, I definitely want a lot of silicon ore and this system, for example, has um, fire ice, which is going to be really useful. Uh, organic crystals, optical radiant crystals, basically all the rare resources are always useful. And it has all of the basics in large quantities as well. So this is a fine pick. And you're probably going to want to visit one or two other systems as well to kind of fill out uh, the remaining rare resources that you need. If you're looking for unipolar magnets, you might have to look a little harder because those are typically around black holes like we have over here. Or uh, as you can see, unipolar magnets or neutron stars, which are these purple things. Yep, as you can see, it's also over here. It doesn't tend to be anywhere else. You can get sometimes very randomly lucky as far as I know, but I've rarely seen it anywhere else than neutron stars and black holes. So that's where you will find that. But most of the other rare resources can be found pretty much anywhere. It's just a matter of checking which system has them. So first of all, setting up new mining stations on a planet is awesome, especially the initial phase of when you start to do that, because some of these planets look amazing. So it's really fun to visit all the different types of biomes. Keep in mind that you don't need to overcomplicate it. You don't also necessarily need to uh, drain every single vein in here. Just focus on what you need the most at first. There's plenty of resources in the game and you're never going to mine at all. Um, on top of that, remember that you don't need to set up a complete mall on a planet that you're not going to really develop anyway. Uh, so just set up an ILS and request whatever you happen to need for uh, mining on that planet. And it shouldn't take much for your entire mall planet to basically pick up and start working as you can see. Uh, I now have an ILS full of warpers. So as long as you have warpers, you can get your resources from anywhere in the galaxy. And you actually typically need less than you initially think. Although there is no reason not to mine some resource or whatever, because you are going to need more and more and more of it. So it's always going to be put to use. There's going to be veins running out and stuff like that. So depends a little bit on what, what you want to do. But again, I recommend focusing on the things you actually know you need right now. Make sure you have that going and then if there happens to be anything else close by i suggest you just mind that and pick some uh, things up along the way 
So at this point, your model should probably be working like intended, but if it's not or if it's not balancing out fast enough for you, all you need to do is kind of in, improve the production chain and make sure you have enough raw materials going around. So one very easy way to solve a major bottleneck in the system is using the rare recipes for both the nanotubes as well as the graphene. You should have those rare resources somewhere close by your system. You should now be e easily be able to get that. And well, these, as you can see, these are Mark II chemical plants. If you fill these up with those raw resources, you're not going to have a problem with nanotubes and um, graphene for a very, very long time. Now, the same holds, of course, as well for all the other resources. So if you want, you can just double up the whole basics section that should solve a lot of the problems that uh, go into distributing these resources around. Uh, at least it helps balancing the system out faster. You do need to make sure you actually have enough raw resources coming in. So, for example, as you can see, I'm still getting minimal amount of um, silicon ore coming in because we still have a pretty high demand. Remember, this is also going to our science planet. So, all in all, you just need to make sure you have enough raw resource and just building production facilities by itself is not going to solve any problems. But honestly, at this point, you should not have any problems or it's easy to solve it by just hooking up a couple of more planets to your production system. At this point, your science production should also be up and running. And of course, you can scale it up very easily by just copy pasting the build that we already have in place, as long as you have enough raw resources to go into that once again. And you should easily be able to fill out the entire technology tree with the exception of anything that requires white science. Specifically, I recommend at this point that you start researching the Dyson Sphere stress system, because of course, in the next episode, we are going to build the one thing that we haven't built yet, and that is a Dyson Sphere. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you join me for the next one and if you haven't done so please like and subscribe because it really helps me out and i hope to catch you in the next one